everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you wonder why day after day I tell you about the superiority of Horlicks malted milk over all imitations, here's the reason. Every day, thousands of new users of malted milk are being created. Now, many of these new users don't know about the inferiority of the imitations of Horlicks that have recently appeared in some stores. They don't know that where Horlicks uses only full cream milk, these imitations often use just skim milk. That where Horlicks uses only choice selected wheat and finest malted barley, these imitations contain raw cocoa, inferior malt, and as much as 60% of ordinary sugar. And that whereas the ingredients in these imitations are just mixed up together, Horlicks uses a special process that preserves the minerals and vitamins. That's why we always say get Horlicks, the genuine malted milk that gives results. Horlicks can be obtained at any druggist's in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. You can imagine Lum's disappointment a few days ago when no one showed up for the ceremonies that he had arranged for the unveiling of the statue he intended to erect and present to the citizens of Pine Ridge. He left the store that afternoon and hasn't been seen since. Now, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the Jotham Down store in response to an urgent call from Abner discussing Lum's strange disappearance. Listen. No, I... Saw him since he left out of here Friday afternoon. Well, uh, where'd he say he's going, Abner? Why, he said he's going over home for a while, but I've been over there a dozen times yesterday and the day before, and he weren't there. Well, I'll declare. And that, that's the reason I called you over here, Dick. Well, when he never showed up today, I begun to worry about him. I, I just thinking maybe that we ought to drag the mill pond. Drag the mill pond? Why, you don't... Oh, no, Lum wouldn't do anything like that, Abner. Well, now, if you could have saw how disappointed he was the other day when nobody showed up for the unveiling of that statuary, why, you'd be uneasy about him, too. I don't know as i ever seen Lum so tore up or anything. Never seen him so low in spirit. Well, I don't think, though, he'd let it affect him that bad. Well, I don't know. I've heard of men getting disappointed in love and... Jumping in the river and off of bridges and such stuff as that. But I uh, reckon if Lom had jumped in the mill pond every time he'd been disappointed in love, he'd be a diving champion by this time. <laughs> yeah, poor old Lum. But it's his own fault that he gets himself in those embarrassing predicaments, Abner. This idea he had of erecting a statue of himself was a mistake from the start. I tried to tell him that it wasn't his place to put up a monument in his honor. Well, he know that, but he said it looked like nobody else was going to, so he'd have to put it up himself. Well, it was just a waste of money putting up a little statue like that. It wasn't over eight inches tall. If you just set that thing up down there while somebody run over it the first day. <laughs> that was made to put on a mantelpiece or a table, not to be set up in the public square. Well, see, he never saw it, though. He expected that it'd be a heap taller than that store you're down there. He gives six dollars and eighty cents for it. Well, he couldn't have expected much for that amount. But it's a good thing now that he didn't spend a lot of money on it the way things turned out. No. I I do wish though we could get some kind of a hearing from him. I'm just afraid that something dreadful's happened to him. Well, now I wouldn't worry about it, Abner. I don't know where he could be, but he's had lots of hard knocks before and didn't lose his head. Oh, well, I don't think he lost his head, neither. I don't see how he could, hardly. Well, I mean, I don't think he'll do anything rash. Well, I hope not. But if you could have saw him when he left out of here the other day, why, you wouldn't be surprised to hear nothing that he's done. Here he was, all dressed up in that uniform he'd borrowed from the lodge, all ready to go over there and make that presenting speech. When he found out that nobody come to the ceremonies, why... He, he couldn't look no worse took back if he'd have heard judgment was coming tomorrow. Well, it was bound to have been a big disappointment to him, naturally. Had his heart set on it and all. Yeah, uh, here comes uh, Grandpappy now. Maybe he's got some news. He's been out asking everybody if they saw anything of him. Well, I believe I better get on back to the store, Abner. 
I don't know much we can do, but if there's any way that I can help, well, I want you to be sure and call me. Well, uh, thank you, dear. Uh, did you get any news about them alarm, Grandpa? No. No, there ain't nobody saw him since he taken that uniform back to the large hall the other day. How are you, Richard? Why, pretty good, Grandpa. How are you, Sal? Oh, tolerably, I reckon. Awful tore up about Lum showing up missing, though. Yeah, that's bad. But now you fellas mustn't worry about him. He might have just taken a trip or gone fishing for a few days or something like that. Yeah. Abner was telling me about how disappointed he was over the way his unveiling ceremonies turned out. Yeah, and I, I found out just a while ago how come nobody to show up down there, neither. It uh-huh. was all Mose Moose doing. Mose Moose? Yeah, Mose and that bunch that hangs around the barber shop over there. Just for a joke, got the word passed around that the whole thing had been called off. Well, the uh, ornery outfit. Well, now, Mose aren't until a dead lime that way, as good a friend as they are. Well, I jumped Mose about it, but he said he never expected Lum to take it so hard, just aiming on having a little fun out of him over. <laughs> well, that sounds about like that Mose Moose, all right. That bunch that hangs out down there will do anything. Yeah. Oh, no, me, it's worth a body's life if he ever goes to sleep in that barber chair. I was down there Saturday getting myself shaved and strapped off to sleep, and them blamed idiots painted my face all up like a woman. Never told me about it. Let me go clean out on the street making laughing stocks out of myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard about that, Ed. <laughs> well, I've got to go, fellas. Now, let me know, though, if you hear anything from Lum. Yeah, all right, Richard. Yeah, we will. Well, sir, Abner, I, I'm getting sort of worried about Lum. Oh, me. It ain't like him just to drop out of sight this way all of a sudden. No telling what might have became of him. Oh, no. I was just thinking a while ago, Grandpa. All the different things that might have could happen to him. Well, sir, I've been doing the same thing, Abner. He might be wandering around out in them mountains by himself. Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, it might have affected him worse than we thought it did. He might have went clean out of his head and just wandered around lost up there in no telling. I got to thinking about Robertson Crusoe, that story about him sleeping for 20 years all by himself. Well, I'm the hard sleeper, Grandpa, but I don't believe he can sleep that long without waking up. No, I say I just got to thinking about that story, and I just wondering if anything like that could have happened to him. Well, ain't no telling, not a bit in the world. I've just worried myself plumb sick about it. Weren't able to sleep none last night, just paced the floor backwards and forwards all night long. Well, I do know. Me and Lum has always been such good friends, you know. Yeah, I know you have, Abner. Lum's did more for me than every fella could do for another, it looks like. Yeah, Lum's an all right fella, all right. I hope mm-hmm. nothing ain't happened to him. Yeah, we was talking the other day. He was aiming on taking his money. We made off the circus business. And out of them hogs that Squire Skimp sold for us, we got might nigh $3,700 in the bank. And $3,700. Yeah, that's what we got. Mom was saying the other day how he's going to take it and invest it first, make millionaires out of both of us. He yeah, said. he'd have did it, too. Yes, that's he fair. would. And yeah. Lom, they don't make no better businessman than Lom had that's right. said that. I thought you and Lom was aiming on fixing up a store here, Abner. Going to get some of them uh, models to put clothes on and all that stuff. Well, we had been talking about it, but after we got so much money, I think Lom had a heap bigger idea than that, Grandpap. He... Said he was going to have a statue of me and him on every corner in Pine Ridge. That was his last word to me the other day. I believe that'd be too many of them. Uh, I reckon he put some lights in them well, or lampposts or something. Well, I'm no best. If he said we needed one on every corner, why, well, we needed it on every corner. That's the way I feel. Uh, wait a minute. Let me catch our ring. Oh, my goodness. I hope it ain't no bad news about Lum. That's just what I'm afraid of. I'm just. Might not scared to pick up her each well, Go ahead and answer it. We'll find it out sooner or later anyway. Hello? Uh, this is the Jotham Down store. Abner Peabody talking. Why, no, Mom, we ain't. Uh, uh, who is this talking? Oh, why, no, Everlina, we don't know where he's at. But we ain't saw him in three days. Now, straighten yourself up, Abner. You sound like you're crying. He did. Well, I do know. Well, that's just what we're feared of. Yeah. Yeah, me, me and the grandpappy spirit are just sitting here just now trying to figure out what could have happened to him. Well, all right, Everlina, I will. I'll call you just as quick as we get a hearing from him. All right, not at all. Goodbye. Uh, who was that, Evelina? Yes, sir. 
Said she'd been calling over at his place for him, but hadn't been able to get him. Said that they, she had a date with him for last night, and he never showed up for it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. If he had a date with Evelina and never showed up for it, I know something's happened to him. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what we better do, Grandpap. We better just call up a sheriff in at the county seat and get him out here this afternoon and get him to work yeah, on Yeah, I'm just thinking we ought to make an announcement on the party line, too, and ask everybody to be on the lookout yeah, for that's him. that's a good idea. I'll do that right now. Oh, yeah. me, I know something happened. Tell him to uh, notify us if they see or hear, hear anything of it. Yeah, I'll just uh, give the fire alarm right here. I just had a feeling all along, Grandpa, for something terrible that happened to him. I know that I know that. Wait, uh, hello. Uh, there ain't no fire, no place. Uh, no. This here is Abner Peabody talking. Uh, I just wanted to tell you folks out on the party line that Lom's a missing. He, he disappeared three days ago, and we ain't seen or heard nothing of him since. Uh, he was uh, wearing a blue serge suit. And uh, a pair of tan button shoes and a black hat when he was sold last time. And a celluloid collar, Abner. Yeah, it's a, a, a collar, but no tie. And if any of us get any word of him and it's in the daytime, well, call the jot him down store. And if it's of a night, well, call my place. Now, I just hope all of him just be on the lookout for him. Please. We're sure that any news of Lum will be appreciated by his old friend Abner. In the minute or so that we have left, I want you to hear a letter I brought along tonight. It came from Mrs. B. Wagner, who lives in High Point, North Carolina. Here's what she says about Horlick's malted milk. Dear Lum and Abner, my brother's baby, five months old, weighed four pounds when it was born. Four nurses cared for it, and almost every kind of milk food imaginable was tried. But the baby didn't even begin to thrive until we put him on Horlick's malted milk. He's been drinking your product for two weeks now and has already gained two pounds. We can't begin to tell you how much we praise Horlick's to our friends. Well, Mrs. Wagner, we certainly do appreciate your taking the trouble to write and tell us your experience with Horlick's. Letters like that are so sincere and convincing. Mothers, you can get Horlick's, you know, at your druggists in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.